Are you a superstitious Christian? I want you to stop and really think for a minute. Are you a superstitious Christian? So we are going to be really addressing this kind of tension that has occurred, uh, especially, I will say, with technology <laughs> and how it has, in some ways, replaced our dependency on the Lord. Okay, so I'm going to be really focusing in on Galatians 5, 17 to 25. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For those are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Okay, so the point I'm going to be really picking at right now, which is there is this tension that we experience, right? So there is this friction between walking in the spirit, walking in the flesh. This is something that, though as a Christian, we ought to be walking in the spirit most of the time. There are going to be times where we're going to see that uh, that flesh kind of rise up, right? And that's why there's different points where we talk about like crucifying the flesh with its passions and desires, right? And so uh, different ways in which we can do that. So, of course, submitting ourselves to the Lord and to the process of sanctification, allowing him to be, make us more like him. Things like fasting can really be helpful because in times like that, we are placing our own uh, desire to eat at the feet of the Lord and really focusing on spending time with him and letting him renew our mind and our spirit. So there are ways in which we can kind of enhance our capacity to do this. And it also occurs through the process, right? And so as we're becoming conformed to the image of Christ, we are going to see that those suffering and hardship and difficulties are going to make us more Christ-like. So it's not just like a process that I got to do on my own. <laughs> it's something that happens with him. But when we're thinking about being superstitious as Christians, sometimes what that looks like, particularly in the area of even technology, is that we are not actually seeking the Lord for our information, but we are seeking it through other means. So what do we use to define superstitious? Let me start there. So I'm using Merriam-Webster. A belief or practice resulting from ignorance, fear of the unknown, trust in magic or chance, or false conception of causation. B, an irrational ad object attitude of mind toward the supernatural, nature, or God resulting from superstition. Um, Okay, so we're going to focus on definition one, right? So A and B. So sometimes what it kind of looks like for Christians, and maybe they're not noticing this, is that they go to social media for a word from the Lord instead of praying, instead of spending time with him and trying to get that information from the actual source, we are going to secondary <laughs> sources in order to get that information or um, I can see this one again, like the scripture of the day. I love getting the scripture of the day until I started becoming superstitious about it. And still it started to become like a horoscope for me. Like, oh, what's the day going to bring? I'll just look at my scripture of the day for it to predict for me how my day is going to go, right? And is that wise? Absolutely not. Because there were times where the scripture was relevant. And then there were times it was in opposition to what actually the word the Lord had given me. And so then I'm contending, am I going to believe what God has said? Or am I wrong? And, and should I be 
am I not hearing right? Right. So it turned into a very superstitious act, act for me. And I know it's something I hear all the time as well. Oh, I was on TikTok and I keep getting these, these messages about what God is saying to me. It's like, okay, I'm not saying the Lord can't speak to you in that way, but why aren't you going to the source? Right. And so this becomes kind of the tension is it's sometimes like easier, <laughs> more convenient, less work for us to do that. And then we start to think, oh, well, God must have spoken to me through this person's message because I was stressed about this. It's possible, but you're not going to know that unless you actually spend time with the Lord. How do you learn the Lord's voice? So some people become very dependent on external parties saying, so not necessarily just being superstitious in the sense of technology, but maybe it's through their pastor. Maybe it's through a particular friend. Oh, my friend is the one who speaks from the Lord. Are we becoming dependent on vessels and on other forms of receiving God's word instead of actually going to God himself? Psalm 37, 3 and 4. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So really focusing in on Psalm 37, verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. I want to abide with the Lord and I want to know from him as my source, not through alternative sources. Are there times where the Lord can use alternative sources, secondary sources to confirm things? Absolutely. But that ought not to be the place that we are dependent on. We ought to be dependent on God himself. And you know, what's funny is that when I actually stopped like I, when I removed those applications off my phone and stopped receiving those kind of communications and stopped kind of even depending on it, I really feel like I started to get a much better sense of what he wanted for me. And it became a lot easier in certain cases to discern because not that I couldn't discern at all before, but I really feel as if it caused confusion sometimes because it would create competing messages. And if we even think a bit about like the, the temptation that the devil brought to Jesus, right? Using the word, using it out of context, using it improperly, right? And we're also, you know, consistently encouraged through the scripture to be a worker who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So there could be times where things are not relevant or appropriate in a particular situation, right? And it's the Holy Spirit's leading. But when we become really superstitious and we're looking for these signs and we we just want to know, like, can someone confirm this? Am I supposed to get a house? Oh, look, I saw a I saw a video and it was talking about houses. That must mean God is sending me a house. No, not necessarily. It could be a form of temptation about something that you're pursuing outside of the will of God? Have you made that the house the focus of your pursuit of your life? Or are you following the Lord? And I'm seeing this more and more. So I'm personally really, it was a very, I would say a very frustrating experience to go to because I did not even fully understand how superstitious I was becoming about it. And yet, now that he has helped me see that's what's going on, it's like all I can see is now this really superstitious behavior from the Christian community. Is They're super, very superstitious around scriptures. They're very superstitious around specific speakers. Like, oh, this person is, is saying that the, I'm going to get money and I'm, I'm going to be abundant. And they keep telling me this. So that must mean, did you pray? Did you seek the Lord? Did you fast? Did you get on your knees and ask him what he wants? Do you know what the word says about the area? Delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. And the beauty about that is that as you become more like him, he shows you what desires you ought to desire. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day, night, wherever you are. Bye.